an awesome lovely stuff man so first and foremost if you could please explain to the viewer what you what you do for work and of course your career and the evolution of that that'd be super and we'll, uh, we'll proceed from there yeah cool so um my background's mainly been in recruitment so i've been in recruitment for 10 years um worked in a company for three four years and then co-founded um company of my own which me and my old business partner um grew to around 25 30 people when i left um that had a valuation of about 5 million. So um, I moved out of that um, just because of my situation of traveling back and forth from um, UK to Ireland. I was doing that like twice a week. So it just didn't make sense to continue doing that. Um, yeah. So I wanted to exit it. Um, he went to carry on. So um, he ended up buying me out and that was around um, a year ago. So now, um, now I've had a taste of kind of like not, managing people and growing a, a company um it's probably not something that, that i want to do again um even though that was kind of the plan when i started so now focusing on doing a few different things which is still doing recruitment um but then on top of that um doing uh, property um as well so some land flips and, and developments which i've started over the last kind of three or four months or so Awesome. And are you primarily focusing on the recruitment side of things or the property side of things moving forward? What's the bigger picture? Um, probably moving forward, probably move more into property. I've always, always wanted to do it um, ever since I, I was younger. Um, but I think when, when you're younger and you, you're kind of intent on earning money, you get into the things that are quite quick money. Obviously, yeah. property is a little bit slower. Um Whereas recruitment is quick money and, you know, there's there's a lot of money in it for young people. But most recruitment owners kind of have the same idea that they want to go to an exit and then get into something that's probably a little bit more strategic rather than kind of more of a, a sales job, really. So, yeah, long term, want to move more into focusing purely on, on property, but want to kind of build up a pipeline before I do that, um, mm. which is quite good because obviously with the recruitment side of things now, um, I work mainly the US market. So that kind of gives me some extra free time in the morning to to do um to do property um, and build that up. So I split that now of doing recruitment, maybe kind of two, three days and then property two or three days as well. Okay, nice. Awesome, lovely stuff. And obviously our, our work together is predicated primarily on improving qualities of or variables of health and performance. Talk me through your experience with, of course, your quality of health and what led you to this point of work with myself. Mm, yeah, so I think for me. I've never really been into um, fitness too much and kind of go into the gym, um, mainly for me because I haven't seen the the benefits of it. But one of the reasons why I reached out to you is that I found myself being quite low on, on energy and, and quite tired in the afternoons and, and things like that. And especially when you're sitting at a desk, obviously, one, you're not very active. It's very easy just to, like, grab a can of Coke or chocolate. Chris, you, you do... That's a well-known thing in, in recruitment in general that so many people put on weight in their like first first year of the job because you oh, are really? just okay. yeah it's, it's such a well-known thing because people are just grabbing quick snacks rather than you know because you, you can work all hours under the sun really so you don't really put the time into maybe what you're eating um, and taking that time out of your day to go do exercise um, because you do work long hours so you are snacking maybe getting takeaways to, to the office and things like that so I wanted to to change that um, and put more time into being more productive having more energy um, and that's what it was kind of centered with around me rather than the gym work but surprisingly I've actually really enjoyed the, the gym work um, mm. and I think the other thing for me as well is that I'm, I'm quite a foodie so I really really enjoy my food um, and that's actually been really good in a way that I've not missed food at all, but there's also a slight part of me that's like, oh, I do miss enjoying a Chinese, but now I don't. I think I've said to you over the last few weeks, and when I had that cheat meal on the weekend now, is I just think, what was the point of that? And that, that's yeah, something yeah. that I've kind of never thought I'd ever say, really. So what would you think that's a byproduct of? Do you think that's a byproduct of improved relationship with food, or what, what led to that? I think in the past when... So I've always gone up and down in weight. So I've always been at a weight. I'll put on maybe a stone and a half, take off a stone and a half, put it back on. I've always, always done that. And the way that I've always got it off is by um, my diet has been like salads and, and things like that. Just 
you're actually cutting a lot of calories and just not eating the right things. You, you're mm. basically kind of pretty much starving yourself. Um, so where I've I've always done that, I've always then put it put it back on again because I can't sustain it. Whereas with this, my diet hasn't actually really changed that much. Mm. Um, it's just more the timings of it and what I'm eating. So for example, instead of eating rice at lunch, I replace that with eggs and then eat the rice in in the evenings. I think the reason now for probably not enjoying those takeaways as much is is one, you know, when you are doing cardio during the week and you see how much effort you put in to take off 300 calories and yeah. then you see a, a can of Coke, for example, which is like 250 calories, 200 calories, and you think well, that is really, really not worth it. Like for sure. just for what, five minutes of drink for 30 minutes of work. So I think that's one part of it. Um, but also, I think you, your body starts to become used to, you know, eating the good foods of the the veg and steaks for me, like salmon, chicken. And then when you go have something that's unhealthy, you, your body, you really feel that you notice it a lot more than what you're used to. I guess when you're eating quite fatty foods on a regular basis, your body gets a little bit used to it. Um, yeah, or, so or you, you don't just really notice it. poor all the time and you don't really acknowledge yeah, the difference. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. So, you, I mean, that was the reason why I come to you is because I was feeling tired all the time. Whereas now, when I don't ever feel like that, so when I do, I, I notice it a lot more. Um, For sure. So yeah, yeah, it's been a big difference with that. And, and what led to you wanting to prioritize your health right now as opposed to an, earlier in your career? Was it as a byproduct of feeling significantly less uh, energetic on a daily basis at this stage of your career? What, what really led to that kind of shift for yourself? Uh, <laughs> Good question. Um, I think that before I've just always, I've always fought through it um, more from like a mental point of view. I just mm. get on with it and just carry on working. Yeah. Um, so I think there's more just a, a mentality thing rather than more than anything of actually just wanting to prioritize it and actually not have to constantly fight through it. And I think for me, I, I remember our first conversation is that, I've always mentally thought, well, I'd rather work 10 hours and fight through it rather than take an hour and a half, go into the gym, working less. But so I kind of had to see the results of myself of maybe working, let's say, eight and a half hours, for example, instead of 10, but mm -hmm. being more energetic in those hours compared to a sl kind of a sluggish 10 hours. I needed, I'd never seen that before, so I didn't know what the benefit was. So to me, it was a risk of like, right, let me do this over a bit of a period of time to see if it's worth it. And it and it has been. So I probably work, you know, a little bit less hours now, but I don't have that tiredness from kind of like three o'clock onwards where I'm struggling to, you know, get energy to and concentration levels to, to carry on working. Yeah, definitely. And out of the six variables I'm sharing on screen as well that we obviously referenced when we first started working together, mm -hmm. what variable has been most important for you when it comes to improving how you feel on a daily basis? So I'd probably say for me um, is the nutrition and the training as well. Um, I think one thing that's also been quite surprising is that we, we added in an extra session on my rest day it was just a light session, but that was because I come in, I think it was maybe after three or four work, four weeks working with each other. On that last week, I come in on the day that um, I didn't have a session and mm. I didn't really feel right. So now it's just a, a really standard part of my day. It's just to wake up, go gym, then go work. And if I don't do that now, it feels strange and I feel a bit off. So the training's obviously been a big thing. And then just the nutrition of what um what I'm actually eating has has been the, the the biggest change um out of those. I mean they're all obviously important. I think obviously sleep wise that's not something we I've really had an issue with. No, your, your sleep metrics have been impeccable yeah. in comparison to most others. They've, they've been yeah much better than most individuals we work with. I mean typically their awake time is 90 minutes to two hours when we first start working with them. Whereas in this instance for yourself, your REM and deep sleep was so high it was pretty much on the money from the outset, which is great. Um, I'm yeah. really curious as well, in terms of the variables that we have been through in terms of blood testing work, et cetera, was that something which you were aware of the importance of prior to coming on board? Was that something which you were aware of in terms of its, its utility or is it something which you just chosen not to really explore before? Yeah, I, I think I've, I, it's something that I've always wanted to do, 
to take um, to take blood tests. But uh, again, I've just I've just neglected my my health a little bit on that. Mm. So I've known the importance of it, but like I say, it's more not knowing. It, it weren't a case of not knowing the importance of it, but more just a case of paying more attention to it and actually something that I'm just trying to focus on um, and and improve. So. Mm. I mean that that was interesting as well, and I, I'd say even those you know, doing the um, the blood test and getting sent the the supplements, I think that's probably been quite a big change as well. Um, it's it's kind of hard to know what to put it all down to, because obviously you do make so many changes of like adding in the supplements and then the, the food and the training, so you don't know necessarily what what that may be, and um, it's obviously a mixture of of all of it. Um, mm. but again, I, I do think that's quite an important part. So if I go away for a night, for example, or a day on a weekend where I might not take a few supplements, I, I do kind of notice the difference in not taking those as well. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say all of it mixed, mixed together is, is just been, um, created a, a big change. For sure. And, it's a bit, and finally as well, I obviously appreciate your time as well. I want to keep it pretty concise. Has there been any variable that's been particularly difficult for you to adapt to or acknowledge the importance of and then therefore start committing to it? Or has it been something which you felt very open to and therefore, of course, had no difficulty with adhering to a process? Yeah, I, I think for me, I'm quite quite disciplined. So, you know, as well, obviously we speak every day. So there, having someone there is going to kind of hold you accountable and say, have you done these things? That is, that's Pretty obviously difficult strong. To... <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's a strong part of it, but I do think kind of more importantly that, that that is that there's no point in committing your time to something um, and putting the effort into it if you're not going to follow all of it. So, mm. you know, when we started working together, it was it was more of a case of like, right, I know I want to do this. So, you know, commit the time to it and make sure that, that you do it. So I, I haven't missed a, a workout since we started working with each other. I don't think I've neglected sleep since we started working with each other. I think the one thing that I've probably struggled with um, is just getting in the daily steps. But again, that's just for some people that'd be easy for other people it'd be hard where I'm sitting at, in an office all day. Um, that can be difficult sometimes. But again, there's the solution to that, which is the the treadmill and the standard desk. So um, that's the that's the only thing that I've struggled with, really. Um, I wouldn't say there's been anything else that, that I've that I've struggled with adapting to. No, I totally agree with that. And obviously, you're down five kg at this point, also four it's four kg at this point as well, which is which is yeah. awesome, man. So yeah, adherence has been been perfect in that respect and impeccable. Okay, yeah. awesome, lovely stuff. I'll stop recording here.